This module looks at how to set the energy performance indicators for the baseline and target. An energy performance indicator measures an organization's energy performance against its business output. That measure against business output is important. If the performance indicator was based on the absolute amount of energy consumed, it would appear that energy performance was good whenever business outputs were low. If energy intensity was used to set the performance indicator, there would be a discrepancy whenever business outputs increased because fixed energy costs would remain the same. Regression analysis is the easiest way to evaluate energy performance. So Y is equal to AX plus B, where X is a measure of production, A is production-related energy costs, and B is fixed energy costs. In other words, those energy costs that will not change whatever the level of output. So let's focus on the energy performance formula. Energy performance is equal to production-related energy costs times a measure of the level of production plus fixed energy costs. We'll use a case study to give you a better appreciation of what's going on here. These are an example company's monthly production and power consumption data for three business years 2009 to 2011. To calculate the value of each production unit, this company uses shipment value. And here's a graph on that data with monthly production on the x-axis and monthly electricity consumption on the y-axis. That creates 36 plot points from the data for 12 months by three years. The black line is plotted from an average of the scatter. This average line will be called the energy performance baseline. Once the baseline is defined, the scatter can be divided into two groups using the baseline as the divider. Above the line are inferior scatters, below the line are superior scatters. Using the same method, you can then create an average regression line for the group of superior scatters, shown here as a red dotted line. Since the superior scatters represent proven performance, in theory you can conclude that the average scatters, the black line, can be improved to the average line of superior scatters, the red line. In this case, the potential improvement is 8.35%. And in fact, this organization set their savings target at 8% for the year 2012. The next step is to separate out the scatters for the business year 2009 and to create an energy performance indicator baseline curve for that single year. Here, your, your superior curve for the year is also shown. Using the 2009 baseline, we can determine the cumulative electricity savings in the four years to the end of the 2012 business year. That's in March 2013. Each month's production figure is inserted into the 2009 y is equal to ax plus b baseline equation, as shown on the previous slide. That generates an energy baseline adjusted to actual production figures for that month. Here, the April 2009 baseline adjusted to actual production figures is a little over 850,600 kilowatt hours. Next, the month's adjusted energy baseline is compared to the actual energy use to calculate a saving or loss. Here, the saving in April 2009 was a little more than 52,500 kilowatt hours. The saving or losses for each month are used to calculate a QSUM saving for the year. Because the 2009 baseline is an average of the savings and losses during the 12 months between April 2009 and March 2010, the QSUM at the end of March 2010 will, of course, add up to zero. But the addition of savings or losses is continued to create a QSUM for the entire four-year period to the end of business year 2012 and March 2013. By the end of March 2013, the organization had achieved QSUM savings of 3,226,465 kilowatt hours, and that had a value of $406,151 when compared to that 2009 energy baseline. If you express this as a QSUM curve, it looks like this. However, if you took no improvement actions, the same amount of savings can be interpreted as a loss. Here are the average performance lines for each year 
from 2009 to 2012. As a single graph, it gives you an apparent comparison of four different years. The 2009 baseline is set as the black line. The other three lines fall under baseline, showing savings in three consecutive years. It's worth noting that in 2011 and 2012, savings were achieved even though there was significant production volume decline. And here are basic versions of the three most typical results from a regression analysis.